Hey everyone, welcome to Houseplants Gone Wild. My name is Kelly. Uh, today I wanted to do a short video on purchasing plants and discounted plants and how I bring them into the home. Uh, I put out a video just a day or two ago about some of the plants that I have here in our spare room that I'm kind of using as a little bit of a uh, plant little nursery or sort of care center for some plants that were struggling or just need a little bit uh, extra support or ones that I just kind of want to pay extra attention to um, plants such as this uh, Monstera deliciosa. It's quite large. It's quite compact in its um, terracotta pot um, Not struggling at all doing just fine, but I want to watch it grow quickly I guess or I got a couple grow lights in here to help it uh, move along um, But as you can see I have a few plants that I've set up here on the table that are different than the last video um, I will still be keeping most of those plants from the last one, you know, a lot of those calatheas and things like that I'll be keeping in here at the grow lights, um, but I'm also going to be putting in some of the new plants that I got. So, uh, for starters, I have a list here. Uh, my computer is still not working, so my editing software is very limited as I'm only using my phone. Um, so yeah, so first off, let's say buying clearance plants. So today I was doing some errands, running around, getting some gifts for the holidays and things like that. And at one of the local hardware stores, they had quite a few plants that they were pushing out and they're making room for more poinsettias. Even though they had hundreds there, they uh, were putting out a lot of these plants. And I was lucky enough to have my arms full as usual. I usually have a plant that I stick in my shirt, one on each side of my arms, and then hanging on to two. So I had five plants. And I was just kind of holding them, and I was, wasn't sure about them, so I picked them up and I carried them with me in case I set them down and lose them in the sort of jungle. Um, but uh, an employee came up and said, oh well, Merry Christmas, we're clearing them out, so put a bunch of uh, these oh, stickers on there, now a dollar. so. Got a few of them. Um, some of them weren't a dollar, but they were discounted or they're very cheap. Um, and some of them, they were just, or one of them in particular, was very hard to pass up. So uh, let's just get uh, started on plant care. Oh, and I'll also be going over, um, you know, how I clean them, some of the soils. Um, all these plants, well, not all of them, but most of them are new to me. Um, I haven't had them before. I've had ones that are um, like the the same. I can't remember if it's the same um, genus or family, like um, aeroids, uh, you know, like a philodendron, another philodendron. I have like uh, down in the living room, I have a um, Prince of Orange philodendron, which is kind of like the Moonlight or the philodendron Birkin or whichever. So I'll be going over some of those. Um, so to start off, written down is the variegated shell ginger. So this plant right here, I actually, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, is that a, uh, it looked kind of like a, oh, the name's slipping me right now, um, kind of like a Chinese evergreen. I can't remember the scientific name off the top of my head right now. Wow. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is a variegated shell ginger. It's called Alpinia uh, zerubbent. Zerumbet. I think that's how you say it. Um, but anyways, just really nice leaves, uh, dark green with yellow variegation on it. Um, this plant here, oh, I can see it has some webbing, so spider mites, or most likely. Um, but I can also feel it's quite heavy. So this plant, it does like to have a well-draining soil mixture. Um, it likes, you know, like all plants, medium bright light. Uh, but it also, it likes to be kept sort of on the medium moisture side. So kind of like a calathea almost, like consistently moist, but never fully drying out um, and never soggy, like almost all plants. So. Um, just in a regular, you know, I think six inch plastic pot, comes with a little plant care card. If you get plants, you know about getting a whole bunch of these, um, you know, it just says tropical plant, doesn't give you much specifics about it. 
Um, so I did a little bit of research before this video to see what I could pull from the web. Um, so they're from East Asia. So you know that it's more of a, a warmer subtropic or a tropical plant. Um, you know, medium to higher humidity. Um, you know, if you think about, say, like, well, South Asia and, like, Singapore, you know, high, high humidity, um, they can grow up to 10 feet tall. Uh, the leaves I found on Wikipedia, it said the leaves can be used for cuisine and medicinal, uh, like, herbal medicinal purposes, but from what I also read is they are poisonous. So, best to err on the safe side and don't eat this plant. Uh, yes, so for this one, um, I don't know, it's kind of small, it's compact. I've heard from what I kind of picked up online, you know, for propagation, it can be done by, I think, cuttings, or maybe it's a division. It looks like it's sort of a, um, I think they call it self-heading. It's a little hard to see. Let's see if I can show you this side. As you can see down in there, there's not, uh, you know, it's not like an aeroid where there's there's roots and sort of aerial roots sticking out the side like most monsteras or um, some anthuriums. Um, but yeah, so this one just kind of a cute and you know for a dollar can't go wrong with it. It was either this and I was also holding a uh, ficus lorata fiddle leaf fig and just a little baby one that was regularly 10 bucks and I'm sure if I was holding it I would have got it for a dollar as well but I already have one trying something new so um but yeah so this one like i said you know it's got some webbing so i'm going to be giving all of these plants a wipe down especially the ones that you know like this monstera it's dusty it's in need of a, a good cleaning anyways not that they're really susceptible to spider mites um but because all these plants are new pretty much on the table i'm going to give them all a good wipe down uh and i'll show you how i do that in a minute here so the next one is a Alocasia cerium. I have a, let me see if I can get it. Okay, just make some room here. Um, so this is the Alocasia cerium. I did already pull off uh, some of the dry dead leaves. So this one had about five leaves that were just sort of like this one even is getting pretty, pretty droopy. Just hanging off the side, pretty dry, not looking well. These are very susceptible to spider mites. There was a lot of them there that were too far gone, I would say. Um, very tricky for winter months, you know, oops, with um, underwatering, overwatering. Uh, they, in the summertime, they can handle a little bit more watering. They like to have a light sort of airy soil. Um, not too loosely packed, I would say, but a soil that drains well. Uh, but you also want to be watering them. And I've found every time it's putting out a new, or they're putting out a new leaf, uh, the soil, you can water it, and the next day it'll be quite dry, and the next day after that, even drier. And then within two or three days, it's needing water, and it's sucking up that water. It's putting out new growth. Um, a really uh, vigorous growing plant, I would say, in the summertime, if you're giving it bright indirect light. Definitely no bright uh, or direct light. Um, so this beautiful foliage, that is the Syrian. And I wanted to grab another plant here. This is the Alocasia um, Frydeck. Yeah, so this one, very similar. Um, but it has a velvety leaf, and this is the Syrian. So you can see one's got a little bit more of a velvet or a, a matte finish. The other one's got a, a nice shine to it. Um, I haven't even given this plant a wipe down yet. Let me just put this one aside. Haven't given it a wipe down or anything, um, but it's, and it's also got almost like a little bit of a ripple on the edge of the leaves when they get uh, more mature and uh, newer leaves are popping out. They'll be quite a bit bigger, or usually the growth is bigger uh, if the plant is not stressed. Um, and it'll have more and more ripples to it. Uh, this one here, you know, it's for propagation. You're just going to want to divide it. It'll put out little pups eventually, but not anytime soon. This also was one of those 
uh, plants I got for a dollar and it came with a little plastic cover pot which is definitely handy. I'm definitely running out of some pots for the size because a lot of the hardware stores I've noticed lately are using um, this sort of taller but more narrow like a almost like maybe a five inch or six still six inch pot but um, yeah six inch. So uh, about this Syrian, um, first off it is a hybrid. So it is a mixture between a Zebriana and a Myco Litsiana. Michael Litsiana. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, Zebriana is another plant that I have in the collection that I also got uh, last, early last spring, and it was a clearance plant. And it's, you know, got the special sticker on there. Originally was $43. Um, and they have a little bit of a, it's kind of hard to tell with the lighting, they when they get more mature they have stripes on the stalks uh, or leaflets and it uh, kind of lost all of those. It was struggling, it had spider mites when I brought it back and so I gave it a good wipe down and it kind of struggled, put out some new growth for the summertime um, and then in the f early fall, late summer I was doing some um, some decorating and accidentally some other plants fell over and broke off. I had a nice big leaf or a couple leaves that were on a, their own stalk and this is actually a uh, one there was three plants in here so there's one little one off to the side here and then this one right here with three leaves still quite small quite compact and then I have one that was almost the size of this one here, the Syrian. Um, but yeah, so I left it in its pot. I didn't want to disturb it. It was already quite stressed. And so it's in a well-draining soil mixture, you know, lots of uh, mostly cocoa coir and worm castings uh, for the organic matter um, and lots of perlite. So that way the soil is draining off really well. Um, still winter time I'm adding perlite, extra perlite sometimes to the soil. I've noticed that I'm still overwatering. Like, you know, it's it, it just happens. Sometimes you just overwater. So anyways, uh so with Friday or sorry, Syrian here, uh Southern Asian rainforest is where it's from. So once again, you know, a little bit higher humidity, likes to be kept warm. Uh, this plant here, they said, uh, from what I read online, um, you can have it in direct sunlight, uh, but that's after, you know, you've kind of acclimated it, you've slowly pushed it closer and closer to a window. I would say for a lot of them, it's best to have evening, late evening, early morning sun, direct sun, and then in the afternoons, uh, especially in the hot summer here in the Okanagan, you're going to want to push that plant into a more shaded spot. Uh, somewhere where it's still getting lots of light, nice and bright, um, but no direct rays are hitting the leaves. Um, especially with some of this, you know, beautiful leaves with the nice white streaks. A couple brown spots on there and they're really noticeable. Um, yeah, so, yeah, and then I have that. They said in a lot of nurseries they use an 80 to a 90% shade cloth. So it's letting in 80 to 90% of the direct sun. So a very mild, mild uh, amount of shade. Um, so mostly bright light. So that's that one there. That's another one that I just got. I'll just set this one down here, this one for now. Uh, the other one. So this one I have had before. I got it, I'd say a year and a half ago. And it was, a small, very small plant that I got for a very expensive price when philodendron birkins were just starting to come into popularity. Um, paid, you know, kind of above sticker price, I guess, because it was one of the first ones that I had ever seen in person. Uh, very hard to find at the time, and they're part of that whole new plant fab with variegation. And I just really like aeroids. I love philodendron, monsteras, anthurium. Starting to get more and more into anthurium, um, but definitely monsteras and philodendron. So wanted to get this one just for that reason, and you know, add a variegation. That's pretty cool. So this one here, I've seen it before. 
it's got sort of the white uh, streaks and the streaks actually on the leaves. They're, they're textured too. I can't really get my camera to show it, but um, not a whole lot of variegation in this one. I feel like brighter light and you'll see that come back with the newer growth. Um, but same thing, you know, you're, you're going to want to let it dry out between waterings. Um, it does have roots coming out of the bottom, but you know, I can, I can tell this one's not really a ready to be repotted. I'll see if I can pull it out actually without making crazy mess here. Um, but yeah, so this one, oh yeah, that's got webbing. So this is another one, spider mites. I didn't think they were very common because they have a very waxy thick leaf, like a Monstera deliciosa. You can see there, you know, it's got developed root system, but it's not root bound. It's not like crazy root bound. So I'm going to leave that in the pot, you know, make sure that it's not overly stressed out. Um, give it a good cleaning, give it some bright light and watch it flourish hopefully and then just in time for the growing season uh, this upcoming summer. Um, this is another one, yeah, it came with a cover pot, you know, discounted. Um, yeah, what else do I have on this one? Not a whole lot. I didn't really write, write down a whole lot because I've had this plant before. I struggled with it. Um, I gave it to, I had a friend here in the Okanagan that the plant was struggling and I knew that uh, she loved philodendrons as well and she had been asking about or mentioned a Birkin in the past and I thought, you know, I can't keep this plant happy. It's not on its last legs, but it had lost quite a few leaves and I just, but the few leaves that it had had beautiful variegation. So I decided to be one of those plant friends and give a very hard to find plant I, at the time, I guess. Um, to her and uh, luckily it was you know still able to recuperate. I hate giving away a plant that's even slightly struggling because I just I feel bad. It's not very common that I'll give a plant away that's struggling but sometimes you know I'll give a plant and I'll realize oh I gave you know the wrong pothos that one had been dried out and lost a whole bunch of leaves because it was you know really dry or leggy because I didn't give enough light and then I realized after I gave it away, gave away the wrong one. So, um, but yeah, so Birkins, bright and direct light, let them dry out, parsley between waterings. Um, actually with Birkins, I think that's where I went wrong is I was overwatering it as well and I had it in too dark of a spot. Uh, darker foli foliage, usually more chlorophyll and you can get away with a little bit of a darker area, but Birkins, I think what I'm going to try and do is make sure it's consistent, very bright, but indirect light and um, making sure it's drying out between waterings. Um, I feel like overwatering, as usual, is kind of just a major killer. Um, oh, and with plants that I've also previously had, and I did have this one in my last video here, is a Diefenbachia uh, Camille, C Camille, is that how you say it? Diefenbachia Camille. Um, but yeah, so I think I called it uh, Calamine in the last video. And I have it in this pot here. And this right here, that's the Diefenbachia Camille. You know, it's kind of, it was struggling and it was a cutting that I took before the plant kind of bit the bullet, so to speak. So, propagated it, it's doing well now, but I thought, you know, it, I like having that bright white foliage that or that cream color that just sort of pops in the center of the leaves and this one was small it was compact um luckily for me this was under the table if the hardware store pushed at the back you know wasn't getting hardly any light it looked like like I don't know they must rotate them or have some sort of system that they use for light down there but it was warm it was humid but no light hardly any so very I would say like definitely in the low light spectrum as far as houseplant goes. Um, but yeah, so this one I managed to pick up, you know, out of all the discounted plants, didn't see any like crazy webbing or anything on this one. And Diefenbachia, they're very susceptible to spider mites. It's a pretty common pest for them. Um, but yeah, same thing, you know, a couple, a couple roots sticking out the bottom, but just gorgeous foliage. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna give my luck with this one a little bit more um, I guess on the mature side or healthier than this other one that I started off with in this pot. 
So that's those. Now, uh, one of my favorite plants of the pick today. Uh, live in the Okanagan, love wine, as most might know. And I saw this plant, and I'm not crazy about anthuriums yet. Like, I'm starting to get into them. This one is called a anthurium uh, andrianum. 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 I think if you say it faster, it sounds better. So, um, this one looks like a wine color. Like, how nice is that? Like, a nice Pinot Noir up here, and then you've got something that's a little bit more fruitful and like a, I don't know, I could list a number of wines, Bodacious or Massy or any kind of wine company. That's like a nice Cab Sav and this one's a little bit more dry. But anyways, spider mites on this plant too. Um, beautiful. They are not actually uh, flowers. A lot of people think they're flowers and from research and I've heard it before, they're called spa spats, spates. Kind of like a spade, but a spate. Um, and yeah, but I like the leaves. And this one here, it's got some... I thought at first they were... Uh, what do you call it? Not mildew. Um, they're a new pest that I, I, I luckily have never had, but it's a... Oh, thrip? Is that? I think that's what it's called. The fuzzy white things. Um, luckily, never had them, but... Um, those are just watermarks that came on the plant from being misted or some drips and some salts that were there left after um, the water evaporated. But same thing, you know, like, uh, like most anthurium, I have another one here that I featured in my last video. This is the uh, anthurium big red. It's a type of bird's nest anthurium. Um, hasn't really grown a whole lot lately. Took it out of its humidity dome and it sort of just slowed down for me. Um, but anyways, same thing with anthurium here. You want to make sure that that soil is not fully dry, but you want to make sure it's not soggy. They are an epiphyte, so they grow on or like they grow up a tree um, using their little root systems to climb and get bigger as they reach up for the uh, canopy for more light. <clears throat> um, yeah, what else do I have on this plant? Also, it's called a lace leaf. I've never heard it called that, but I guess that's the common name that popped up when I googled it. Um, so bright indirect light. Um, what else do we have here? Um, oh yeah, so we're in the winter months and it's got some beautiful flowers or space on it right now. But in the winter time, with colder months, with shorter days, one thing you can um, try to do is hold back your watering a little bit more. You might lose some of these spathes. Um, you know, it, it. Most plants that have a flower and they flower indoors, they don't flower year around. Um, from what I found, there is some that that do, uh, like succulents, like the. Uh, God, I can't remember the name of it. It starts with a K. Kalinkoe, I think that's how you say it. Um, but anyways, so this one here, let it dry out a little bit more in the winter time. You might lose these space. It's going through a dormant phase. It needs to rest. Um, but keeping up with the bright light if you can, and then come springtime, you might still keep them. You know, like this still has its, uh, you know, color and everything and uh, for the winter months. But in the spring, giving it, you know, revamping that water, starting to get into your regular summer growing season sort of regimen, and uh, they'll hopefully come back for you, keeping those flowers on. But like I said, I like the foliage. I like this leaf if it didn't have those white spots, or like this one here, you know? Um, just like that shape of them. Anthurium, you know, it's a new, new thing to me, but I'm trying my luck at it, so. Uh, and then the last one, my favorite. So let's make some room for this big one. This here is a Philodendron oh, Silver Sword. Sorry, just gotta make room. Ugh. Okay, what do we have here? Silver Sword. Uh, so a Hastatum. But this one here, it was 
it was discounted, but it was, you know, a little bit more pricey. And one thing that I really, what caught my eye when I saw this plant was, wow, I can't believe I'm seeing this plant in a common hardware store. There's an abundance of them. They're huge. Um, in the spring of 2020, there was a one garden center that I know of here in Kelowna that received uh, small, about this size of this plant, Silver Sword, and they were selling for, I think, 20, 25 bucks, and they sold out, like, right away, within days. There's people on Facebook, like, hey, where do you get them? Like, can you pick me one up? I'll eat trans for you, and I'll pay you extra, that kind of thing. And I was like, I was just astonished. I was like, you know, I love the plant. I love the foliage, but I'm not that crazy. Like, I'm not gonna bend over backwards usually for a plant that I know will be easy to propagate, which it is, and eventually it will just pop up on the market and will be cheap and in abundance. So anyways, um, who doesn't love this foliage? Like, ooh. See if you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah. So that's the silver sword. That's you know, it's kind of like the philodendron birkin size, a little bit of a different leaf shape as they get bigger, which I think is really cool. Like, look at this leaf. It's got sort of that inlet here and like just a different sort of shape. But when the leaves are younger, you know, you have that the same shape as the birkin, but a really, really nice sort of shimmery, almost like a a blue, like a sea blue blue kind of hue. Sorry, I got dirt all over my arm and water. This one here, I can feel it is heavy. So I'm going to let this dry out quite a bit before watering, but we'll more on that later. So um, with this plant, oh, what do we got here? Bright and direct light, likes to be warm. It loves to climb, like most philodendron. Like this one here is already, I don't know, they have... Oh, they do have a, so they put in plant poles that are literally just these green bamboo stakes for it to climb up. And you know, it seems to be quite content with just this dainty little twig sticking up for support. Um, but with a lot of philodendrons and these um, aeroid plants, you know, it's sticking out aerial roots. That's exciting. Um, they like to climb up and they get bigger, better leaves, I think as they get bigger and they're reaching up to the, what would be the canopy in the forest, um, or a rainforest. The, speaking of which, this one is from, commonly found in Brazil, so South America. So, you know, you got that close to the equator, you got the warm, hot, humid air, uh, starting off forest floor and then working their way up. Sorry, you can't really see the whole plant in the screen here. I'll just try and hold it so you can admire that. Beautiful leaf. Wow. I'm still astonished that I got this plant for as cheap as I did and what it was in the spring. Like that's just, people are going crazy. Um, what else? Loose draining soil mixture. Most philodendron, you know, give them that loomy sort of, I use coco coir, tons of perlite, worm castings, kind of the same as for this one here, you know, making sure that it's draining well. But I'll make sure it's a little bit looser. I'll throw in some orchid bark and things that just sort of make it light and fluffy. Like, let's see if I can get a, a handful out of this Monstera here. Oh, without making too much of a mess. So, yeah, it's just, it's a loose sort of soil. Just rolling it in my hands. <clears throat> okay. So, what else do we have here? Yeah, same thing with lighting, bright and direct light. Most plants, almost any plant, bright and direct light. Love it. Um, direct light, not so much. That silvery shimmer, shimmer, I feel like it's, you know, yeah, it's got, it may look not, may not look as dark, <laughs> less chlorophyll kind of thing, but with that silver shimmer, I feel like this is more in the lowish, like lower bright indirect light spectrum. Um, but yeah, just to keep that, avid just growth just popping out aerial roots is all stuck in there um it's common for the lower leaves to yellow over time as they age um you know anything that stresses the plant out this one here luckily doesn't have any bugs knock on wood 
uh, as far as I can see. Spider mites, you know, like I said with Birkin, not really a common thing with these plants, but when they do happen, they can really, because they suck out the juices from under the leaves. And I notice spider mites mostly when, uh, when I can see them, I guess. So I mist around my plants and I'll mist under the leaves and the little mist uh, water droplets will stick to the webbing and then they become very uh, vivid to see, I guess. So I want to use the Santherium and I'll show you kind of what I do as far as cleaning goes. Let's just push this beauty over there. So, wow, dirt everywhere. So one thing I like to use is a microfiber towel. Um, I put some hot water with just plain old dish soap on it and make sure that's not boiling hot for your plants. I let it cool off, but I use the hot water to kind of suspend the soap in there. And this is what I use to just wipe the leaves. I feel like this traps a lot of, if there's spider mites, it really traps them. Um, any of these sort of these water droplet spots, it gives it sort of like a nice mild exfoliant for the plant. Um, yeah, let me just book out of the way. So, and then in here, I have neem oil at the top and just some water and a quick little squirt of dish soap. And so I pressurized it. I give it a good shake to make sure that it's getting suspended in there. And I just give the cloth a little squirt and I'll just go around. And so that's the leaf before. And you want to just be gentle. I like to, with these sort of leaves, I'll take my hand and I'll just put it on the leaf like so and just kind of hold it. Because if you're just going to go around and grab it, you could easily rip the leaf or uh, cause damage or any sort of the like crinkles or anything like that. You just want to be mindful of. So I wipe the top of the leaves before I get carried away. Wipe the top. And then I do the same, I put my hand over and I just give them a nice gentle sort of brush, making sure you're getting close to that stem. Um, because spider mites, they can hide in all those little nooks and crannies. And my golly, they, they just spring up out of anywhere. Like you think you get them all and then they just show up. I'll give it a quick little dry. Don't want to be fooling the camera. The nice thing about this neem oil and dish soap is um, it cleans the leaves like very well and it kills and prevents from bug infestations and it gives it almost like a nice glossy not overly glossy but a nice clean like look at that that's kind of what it was before you know it's got some um water spots and kind of just i don't know looks like it's been around the bush and then you got something like that oh, i think i missed a water spot oh yeah so these ones here, you might have to give them a little extra scrub, you know, making sure you're supporting with your hand at the back. And don't be afraid to add a little extra soap to your cloth because your cloth will eventually dry out and, you know, you won't, if you see a whole bunch of bubbles on your leaves, you might want to wipe them off. Um, you can get like, I guess, soap rings maybe, um, but not usually with dish soap. I just use the generic on dish soap and yeah so you can see here there might be a couple bubbles that's fine um yeah just a gorgeous leaf and i'll let that dry and uh yeah what i do with all these plants when i bring them home any plant i buy especially clearance plants like i had to do with this dainty fella I make sure I wipe them down really good. I check the soil, you know, I pick up the pots out of their cover pots or just check the bottom of them um, and I smell them. So you can smell, you know that sort of composted, musty, like, ooh, this is sour kind of smell. That's like kind of what soil would be like if it's been waterlogged and sitting too long. Because honestly, it's hard to take care of some plants. And these big box stores, they just have an abundance of them and not all the time they know how to care for them. Luckily, the person that I talked to today at the hardware store was very knowledgeable about plants because I went eglionema. I went up to them and I asked about, is this an eglionema? And she said, no, it's a ginger, a type of ginger plant. Um, so that's, yeah, that's what I was trying to think of before. Chinese evergreen, eglionema. But yeah, so 
the next to pot or not to repot. Um, I would leave them. They're already stressed out if you're buying clearance plants. If you can, leave them. Um, very rarely will I get a clearance plant that's stressed out because it's too root bound. It does happen, um, not very often. Spider plants? Spider, yeah. So those are very vicious with their roots. They will break pots. They're, they always are just expanding, like as big as the um, canopy of the plant that's pushing out all those cute little spider plant babies, um, the roots sort of mirror that. Like if you have a big bushy full top canopy of the plant, those roots down there, they're gonna be nice, hopefully white roots that are just pushing against the sides of the pot. Um, but yeah, I usually refrain from repotting if I can. What I've started doing is just getting cover pots and you don't know where all my cover pots went. I used to have more, but um, I'll just set them inside a pot or like this one and just get a terracotta tray so you don't wreck, you know, your wood table. Just set it in there, let it do its thing, repot it in the spring um, if you can. Um, yeah, just let it sort of recuperate. It's going to take time to acclimate to your home environment. You know, like I got these grow lights in here and I kind of, I use these little humidity pucks from Amazon and I just kind of let them adjust to what I'm providing to them. And I try and make sure that I'm seeing how the plant, like I said, with knowing where they come from, like some of these from Asia and some from like Brazil. It's kind of nice knowing that because then you kind of get an idea of where exactly their their home is or where their native environment would be and what it's like. So you can try and mirror that as best as you can. It's kind of hard when you have a, a variety. Um, so what else do we have here? So that's pretty much it. Fertilizing, I wouldn't fertilize them. I usually wait because especially with big box stores, sometimes people don't know when to fertilize or how to water them so they get overwatered and they get over fertilized you get burnt foliage and sometimes the plants are just fine sometimes they grow like crazy with the fertilizer and the balanced nutrients or whatever they're getting but i i don't know how they've been treated so i will not fertilize for at least i'd say like four three or four fertilizing times um, I'll usually make sure I'm watering them uh, really well, making sure that when I do water these new plants, water is pouring out of drainage holes or coming out because I want to wash out any extra salts that might be stuck in the soil or fertilizer or anything. And then on the third or the fourth time I'm fertilizing my other plants, I'll make sure I give them some food just to replenish some of those nutrients and micronutrients that they may might need. Um, and observing plants. So if you, another cool pointer that I have for you is taking photos. Um, cluster all your plants or you leave them where they are. Doesn't matter. Just get a nice wide picture of one or a few or all of them. Like I have this table set up here. I can put all the plants on it, get a nice clear picture of them all. And then in a couple weeks I can come back and I can take another photo and then I can flip between the two. And I can say, oh, well, this Monstera put out six new little tiny baby leaves, like these little guys. These have been popping up like crazy. Uh, yeah, I think I have like 15 little cuttings I stuck in this pot. So, um, but yeah, you can also see like, oh, like that plant sort of wilted in the past week. Check it for spider mites, check its watering, adjust your watering if you need. Um, so yeah, that's something to consider doing. I find it's helpful. I'm trying to take pictures and I'm also trying to update my website. Uh, I was flipping through it the other day and realized I have a lot of editing to do. So I got new photos. Um, a lot of the plants on there are, they've grown and some of them are just incorrect. Like I have uh, Sansevieria well, it's now a Dracaena, so gotta change that. Gotta try and keep up with the times, so. Gonna be editing my site, and um, I'm hoping I can get another video before the new year. I'm not too sure what on, if you have any ideas. Feel free to comment, leave uh, a comment down below, or message me on Instagram, Houseplants Gone Wild. Um, one of the things that 
I was thinking about for a video that might work is plants that I haven't had success with or plants that are struggling or have struggled and why. What, why I think. Um, I have a Stromanthi Trio Star. It was a beautiful plant and now it's, I, I don't know, it's indescribable. It's sad. It's very depressing to look at. Um, and that's the other thing when you get in these um, discount plants. Uh, don't be discouraged. Don't be disappointed if they die. You know, you're getting a plant that's it's discounted usually for a reason. Um, sometimes they're just trying to clear up space. They have just like a percentage discount on all plants. But some of them, you know, they're a dollar and they have things like spider mites or um, just need a little extra care. And if a plant dies, it happens. You know, one thing you can try and do is just try and keep it away from your other plants so that it doesn't affect all of your collection or spread. Um, but yeah, just be mindful of, you know, it takes time. Um, I've been learning from a lot of mistakes that I've made in the past and I'm still going to make them and I still do make them like overwatering. Um, but yeah, just be, be patient with your plants. Just observe them, you know, really take them in if you can and just kind of admire them for the way they grow. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video on houseplants gone wild. Uh, sorry for a little bit of rants here and there, but I just wanted to share with you some of the tips and tricks I have for getting plants at this time of the year or any time of year. So I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed the video and thanks again for watching.